This is the second translation video. I've already talked to you about what translation is, how we get codons and figure out what amino acid they code for. We've also talked about what tRNA looks like and what a ribosome looks like. And now we're going to actually talk about how translation actually happens. Just like transcription, there are three steps. Uh, initiation, where we start at our start codon always, which is always a UG. You do need to know that. Um, elongation, where basically we just continue to add amino acids and go down and read the mRNA um, transcript. And at the end, termination, where we get to one of our three stop codons. So, step one, initiation. We always start at our start codon, AUG, which always codes for the amino acid methionine. I don't expect you to memorize the genetic code. We will give you a codon chart to use on any given test or something like that. However, we do expect that you know that AUG codes for methionine and that it is always the start codon. Um, so during initiation, the ribosome attaches to the start of the mRNA transcript and uh, the anticodon on the very first tRNA pairs with the start codon on the mRNA. So here we see our very first tRNA, number one tRNA here. We have our start codon, and look, the anticodon matches perfectly with the start codon, and it has our very first amino acid attached. Once we're there, second amino acid will want to come into the A site. Remember, this is the A site, and this is the P site. From there, we get to elongation, where amino acids will link via peptide bonds. Remember from biochemistry that that is the bonds that link amino acids, uh, the monomers, together to create a polymer of a protein. Um, the ribosome moves along the mRNA. So, for example, it could look like this. Okay. And then later, it could look like this, draw a better ribosome, and later it could look like this. Oh, sorry about that. So the ribosome continues to move along the mRNA, and as it does, we'll have a growing polypeptide chain as it moves along reading the mRNA. So the ribosome moves along the mRNA, tRNA and anticodons bind to codons and bring in a new amino acid. So the next couple slides I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So let's just say we had our first tRNA, our second tRNA moved into the A site, and while they were there a peptide bond formed between the two amino acids. And so now we have our third tRNA wanting to come in. So the first tRNA leaves, and notice that it no longer has the amino acid attached. This peptide bond formed between the two amino acids now has amino acid 1 and amino acid 2 attached to each other. The ribosome then moves over one codon. So now our second amino acid's in the P site, our third amino acid's in the A site. A new peptide bond is formed. Amino acid 4 wants to come in. This one leaves, these are now attached. This moves over into the P site, four moves in here, etc., and continuing. Okay? At some point, we reach termination, where we get to some stop codon. And there are three possible stop codons. None of them code for an amino acid, so they do not code for an amino acid. They just code for a stop. Um, the stop codon is reached and the mRNA and protein are ultimately released from the ribosome and everything goes their separate ways. Um, so at some point we've, you know, gone down this whole mRNA chain, look how many amino acids we have, and eventually we hit one of the stop codons and everything then releases. The protein goes on its way. It might go to the Golgi or the endoplasmic reticulum to be modified. The mRNA might 
have another ribosome attached to it or it might be disintegrated. A ribosome might go attached to another mRNA. And the end products of protein synthesis are therefore a primary structure of a protein, which is basically a sequence of amino acids bonded together by peptide bonds. And coming back to this picture, now you know how everything works the way that it does. DNA goes to mRNA via transcription. And mRNA goes to proteins via translation.